the boss. Oh, yeah. Hey! Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Berlin Open State Show. Yes, the boss podcast. I am Trevor Silverstein. I am Stanton Jonsson. This is a podcast we usually record at the Comedy Cafe Berlin. Uh, but, of course, because of the current situation, we are not able to. But fortunately... A lot of our hosts uh, have been going out there and recording their own episodes uh, via Zoom. And for those who are unfamiliar, the, the premise of this podcast is that we have an open stage, usually, like we said, at the Comedy Cafe Berlin, live in front of an audience. Um, and we kind of open up the stage to anyone to perform uh, for an yeah, hour, anybody. anyone who signs up, and we just post the results in here. So, so now this is, uh, this is interesting to open up our our you know our Zoom room to anyone. Zoom room. Our Zoom room. That's uh, 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 now a, a nice little phrase we have in our vocabulary. Uh, <laughs> well, usually we get uh, all kinds of people to host. You know, anybody can sign up. It's first come, first serve. Sometimes it's a bunch of weirdos, uh, and you know we have to put those episodes out anyway. But occasionally we get celebrities and. Wow, what an episode we have for you this week. Yes, for any devoted fans, you know that we have a great partnership with Masterclass.com uh, where we have had a, a fine service, a very fine online uh, education platform streaming service. Uh, and we've uh, hosted them before uh, uh, to bring a Masterclass Masterclass uh, in order for uh, some of the different uh, instructors on that to share the back you know, backdoor details, so to speak, of, yeah. of what goes on in their masterclass, what their what their instruction styles are like. And this has usually We've been... We've had some great people from there. Uh, we had uh, Jane Goodall. We had David Lynch. Reba McIntyre. We had Bjork. Yeah, Bjork. We had amazing, yeah. amazing people who, some of whom their masterclasses have not even debuted yet. And so we yeah. get a real sneak peek and it's just an unbelievable opportunity that we have to work with masterclass.com. And uh, I guess without further ado, we should welcome back our returning Masterclass Masterclass host, Vanna Herzog, the, the esteemed filmmaker, uh, joining us uh, from his home in Los Angeles, California. So uh, without further ado, Masterclass presents Masterclass Masterclass. To do anything, you must be prepared. This is the truth. Whether you are a writer or a painter or a garbage man or woman, Riding on the back of a large moving vehicle, heaping plastic sacks of waste and excrement into a larger pile of waste and excrement, it does not matter. It's all about preparation. To exist is to survive, and to survive, one must adapt. This is the truth and has been the truth since the first single-cell organism became multicellular, creating a chain of events built implicitly on chaos and violence that is commonly now known as history. I am esteemed filmmaker Werner Herzog, and this is Masterclass Presents Masterclass Masterclass. Thank you, and welcome, audience, to the inside of my bedroom here in Los Angeles, California. I suppose there is perhaps some confusion as to why a filmmaker, especially one of such magnitude, is speaking here to you today in a quote-unquote Zoom meeting. I offer you no explanation. You all must be completely aware of the situation we are in. If not, please stay inside and stay there until a team of scientists affiliated with Masterclass.com arrive at your home and monitor you closely for the purposes of understanding the effectiveness of our teaching methods. Can you learn cooking from Wolfgang Puck if only food you can cook is frozen from his California pizza kitchen? Can you learn adventure photography from Jimmy Chin if the most adventurous thing you'll ever photograph now is your nude body in front of an open window? And can you learn business strategy and leadership from Bob Iger, a man who resigned from his position as CEO of one of the world's largest media conglomerates barely two weeks before a pandemic threatened the stability of the global economy? These are not questions we have answers to yet, but this is not the point. We are here to learn. And this is why we will begin today's Masterclass Presents Masterclass Masterclass and introducing our panel of geniuses, amongst whom are the most exciting professionals working in any field today, so please welcome Democratic national uh, Democratic candidate for the presidency, Joe Biden. Thank you very much, former Vice President Joe Biden. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah! Slap back there, Alabama. Thank you, Joe. And uh, how's it going here, it's Joe Biden, next Vice President, President of the United States? Thank you. It's very Senator exciting. From Delaware. Very exciting to have you here, Joe. And we we are also Proud joined. Author of the Crime Bill. 
We are also joined here. It's so exciting to have you along with our favorite uh, children's horror writer, masterclass instructor, R.L. Stein. Thank you, R.L. Greetings, mortals. It is I, R.L. Stein, author of the famed young adult novels, Goosebumps. Thank you. And this is a, a fantastic opportunity, as you all understand. You are at home as well, as far as I can tell. And you are uh, are staying inside. A, a sa- it is safer at home, is it not? Uh, Joe, uh, f- former Vice President Joe, uh, uh, please share us with us. What What is life like for you right now? I'm surrounded by green screens. Let me tell you, let me tell you something there, Skippy. I'm living in a world of green screens. I go upstairs, there's a green screen. I'm on the main floor, there's a green screen. Downstairs in the basement is blue green. And out in the back porch, it's a, there's a, a greenish blue. It's a marine. It's a there's an ocean color, and that's the color of victory. Uh, this must be um, quite surreal. Then this is not uh, what you are used to, I suppose, being out on. The campaign trail, you know, meeting people. Oh, uh, I was wrong. I just went out there on the back porch. That's actually the, that's actually Chesapeake Bay. I thought that was a green screen, and I stepped into it. Now I'm covered in crab shit. Uh, well, I'm sorry to hear this, but uh, this is also, uh, I suppose, good news. You are in a quiet place uh, where you can be safe uh, from this, because as a as a presidential candidate, uh, one must uh, be very concerned for your health at this very moment. Uh, of course, uh, maybe I will address this right off the bat. I was a supporter of uh, Bernie Sanders uh, throughout this. and Hell, Bernie Sanders. I got to give it to him. Hats off, Bernie Sanders. Ran a great campaign. Better ideas, better at the debates. Had more days that weren't disasters than I did. Yes. I got to hand it to you. Bernie Sanders was a better candidate and a better man. And if this had been a better country, we would have made a better president. Well, um, but too bad, pal. I'm inclined to agree. You're stuck with agree. Joe Biden. I'm inclined you're to agree. You're stuck with Joe Biden. There's a big gaping. You're at the. You're at the big gaping monster mouth. And there's a guy with a mouth open saying, "Hey, pal, I'm about to eat you." And the only alternative is Popeye. Showing up with a life preserver from a different ship. Well, it, it, if it's Popeye that saves us, we have uh, we simply have no choice, as I'm sure you are well aware at this point, uh, unfortunately. And I don't like Popeye, but instead of spinach, spinach, I I like the taste of Fig Newtons, man. Let me tell you, pal, I like the pay, the taste of them Fig Newtons. Uh, you didn't have those out there, Berlin. All the way out there. Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, we do have some similar uh, uh, Feigen uh, uh, bars, uh, as we like to call them. Uh, and uh, the R. L. Stein, what, what are, are you at home? Where where are you? Where do you live? It is true. I'm in my castle in Maine. Now I I want to tag on to this. If if you truly are the Popeye of this candidacy, then I believe Donald Trump is Pluto. That's right, he's Bluto. He's Bluto, and we've, also, we've, and we've both got some kind of abusive relationship with uh, Olive Oil. She's a... Uh, she's a... Uh, she's the American lady. people. Uh, well, you, you know how it goes. Ah, shit. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, boy. He handed me one. It was a softball right over the plate. All I had to do was keep shouting that I'm Popeye. They can't even pull that answer together. It's okay, Joe. Uh, There's uh, no pressure. Uh, no pressure. We are live streaming. Everyone expects uh, uh, some uh, human boy. amount of, uh, of, of imagine uh, hesitation. Popeye, imagine Popeye, except he forgets where he is sometimes, and it's painfully obvious that Pluto is absolutely going to win in November. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we will try our best to forget it, and, and perhaps we will uh, edit that out of uh, the final version of this because you don't want, I imagine, to be admitting that uh, to the public. Uh, uh, wait, wait, listen, whoa, 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 pal! You come at me with the question, slip it up, doop it up, it up, it up, it up, it up, back flap, back flap, friend. You're sitting here asking questions. Do you want this? You want this? Let me tell you something about the Biden campaign. We're transparent. Transparently 
flapping backwards like a Da Vinci flying machine and somebody tried to pull out of Wiley e. Coyote box. <laughs> That's why people tune in. I haven't had a good day on this campaign trail since, since hell, since I started, since I ran for president three times before this. I've never had a day without a career ending gaffe for anybody else besides Joe Biden. That's why people tune in. This is true. Because I get the Acme box. It says, hey, I'm going to run for president. You go, <laughs> and then it blows up in your face. You fall down the Grand Canyon. That's why people giggle and laugh. They come back because no matter what happens, I'm always back on the job the next day. Band-aid over the eyebrow, a little balder, a little more liver spots than before. <laughs> but you can guarantee I haven't learned my lesson. I'm still polling at about 40%. And God damn it, I'm Joe fucking Biden. Well, we all hope that you will be able to paint that tunnel to the side of a mountain and Donald Trump will run into it. Yes. That's right. That's, that's campaign. That's promise. That's a promise. We're going to paint a big highway on a mountain. I believe in infrastructure. I'm an Amtrak guy. Trains, rail cars, rail freight. The word rail attached to other words. Rail sky. And uh, I think this is a very, rail February. E very exciting aspect of your campaign. And I, I expect we will be going full steam ahead, of course, until we realize that there is nothing below us except uh, the, the train tracks that are falling off of the side of a cliff. That's right. We're going to paint. We're, gonna, we're, we're, we're in the middle of it right now. We're talking to our advisors. We're on... We're on the Zoom machine, talking to our advisors. Let me tell you, pal, I'll make this plain for you there, Pop. We're painting a fake tunnel on the highway. Meanwhile, we're backing out over the edge of Canyon. Woo! Woo! I got a whole supply right here of signs that I can hold up that say, yikes! <laughs> Very but don't exciting. worry, I talk at full volume, pal. Very exciting. I'm like Wiley Coyote, but I'm not afraid to bark somebody down. Get out there over the cliff. You say, I tell you what needs to happen. More stringent punishments for marijuana. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, maybe we disagree on this, perhaps, but uh, we will come back to it. I, I want to check. Uh, RL, uh, you have been yes. a guest on the Masterclass, uh, Masterclass uh, once before. I have. And you were telling us all about how to write your um, scary stories that you, you yes, do. Yes, the Goosebumps novels. Yes, uh, so but I have a new masterclass in the works. Ah, uh, really? Yes. I have been uh, doing novelizations of famous movies. And that is what I will be teaching in my new masterclass. Okay. Could uh, you, for example, imagine a married couple, a beautiful man who is a theater director living in New York and his stunning actress wife. But then one day, he opens a door, and behind it, slime! Slime everywhere! Oh! Uh, ah, shit! Ah, it scared me there. Wow, goosebumps, I, let me tell you, that's a scary story. You might have a future, you might have a future in selling campfires with stories like that. Yes. That scares... That scares the living skin off the back of my head. Um, I have to be honest, uh, I did not find this um, very scary. Uh, to me, yeah. there, are, there are many scary things in the world. Um, cell phones, for example, I find terrifying. Uh, the, the exact uh, situation I'm in right now with a, a, a microphone and a computer camera staring at me uh, from both different angles uh, using different devices is, is frankly horrifying. Opening a door of slime uh, it would be a, a relief in many ways because it would be so out of the ordinary. Have you considered the possibility that our perception of what is scary has changed, RL? It is multimedia you find frightening. Yeah, well, yes. then I have a novelization for you. Imagine a young man living with his mother in 1970s New York City. <laughs> he goes into the street and he is brutally beaten by a gang of thugs. This is not the scary part. <laughs> but then he goes home and he slowly becomes insane. Still not scary. Until he goes on a talk show with Robert De Niro. And going into his green room, there is a door. He opens the door, and what is behind it? Sludge! Sludge! Flowing out the door! Uh, yeah, yes, 
I understand uh, where you might be. Uh, you're coming from this with this remake of the the Joker film. Is what you are. Ah! Uh, ah! Ah! I feel like I woke up from a bad dream that was separate from the 2020 election that I'm mired in the middle of. Wow, goosebumps. I, as someone who frequently accidentally backs into and steps knee first into the Chesapeake Bay, let me tell you, there's nothing scarier than slime. I made Surely sure, not. Senator from Delaware, I, let, I made sure that the, the, the waterway Chesapeake estuaries, water, waterways, Waterways and means committees. There's nothing out here in some of these East Coast Amtrak and Sella Corridor backwaters and creeks and rivers and estuaries. There's nothing but dead geese and CIA agents. It's terrifying. You step in it. It's like an oozing slick of secrets. Secrets and waterfowl. Is this something... Uh, now perhaps we thank you, RL, for these terrifying stories. My pleasure. Um, uh, Joe, uh, so you are here with Masterclass, Masterclass, and, and, and I, I'm curious now, what is your... You are teaching a Masterclass? Ma it's a Masterclass, pal. It's a Masterclass, man. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm hearing more goosebumps. I'm just hearing... Uh, my class is... Uh, hey, sit back here. Scary story. You are teaching I'll how to listen to a goosebumps. scary story? My good, I'll tell you exactly what my master class is. My master class is how to lose an unlosable election versus a candidate and incumbent who's historically unpopular going back to the level of, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, one of the fellas that <laughs> you get it. You get it. You get it. This class I is the, the reverse of the David Axelrod Karl Rove class. On how to do politics, good. Let me put it. Let me put it to you this way: the answer I just gave you, I I showed the work. I worked it out on the test paper as far as I could. It's in pencil. I know I didn't finish the question, but I think I deserve three quarters credit for it because you can clearly see the math right up until it stop. I stopped being able to calculate. Ah uh, yes, but Joe, this is not a this is not a class itself uh, that you are taking. This you are uh, we are promoting your future class. Uh, so there are oh, no, no tests I for signed you. up. I thought I signed up here to take a class. You you were signing up for up my class. They said, "Yeah, hey, we're going to pay you a bunch of money. Some of it's on our table. You're going to get a bunch of envelopes full of cash, pal. And we're going to donate to Biden twin to a victory." And I said, sure, I'll take a class. And it looks like a fun class. You get a little circular. You get a little circular from a grocery store. Pull out and say, I want to take a class in meditation, yoga, crystals. <laughs> this time I want to take a class on how to lose an unlosable election versus historically unpopular incumbent who's overweight. Who's historically he's overweight. He's a fat boy. He's fat. Uh, and I might be telegraphing that punch. That's the only thing I've planned that <laughs> might work on Donald Trump is to get on debate stage and call him fat. That's the whole plan, it's pal. It's the only plan you have. You have no other That's plan. Right. You're in the middle of a global uh, crisis. You have no plan other than to call Donald Trump fat. That's right. You better plan for it, Pete. <laughs> Mr. We're Biden, here. were you happy with your recent uh, support from uh, pr uh, former President uh, Barack Obama? <laughs> 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 There's goosebumps. There's goosebumps. You watch out. You never know which way he's gonna come. Boop -a -dab -a -dab -a -dab -a -dab -a uh, you did not answer my question <laughs> about the endorsement from former President Obama. I know. I've never met a question. Let me. Well, you're, 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 I. You're. Uh, it sounds like you're. Uh, sounds like your uh, voter hasn't made up his mind. Well, in that case, let me tell you, you look stupid, man. I look stupid. You're stupid. You look stupid and you're overweight. And I don't want people like you voting for me. <laughs> That's what I say to people who haven't made up their minds as voters. Let me tell you something about Barack Obama, pal. You're going to question my record with Barack Obama? Barack Obama and I go back five, six, seven months. We've been in business for 50 years. We got a two man operation, pal. We got a partner's desk. That's how we did the White House. I was vice president, he's president. It's more like we were both vice president. We were in that joint like two vice presidents holding hands across away from each other. Roger Rabbit and Eddie Valiant. Uh, let, let me make something clear to you, pal. 
Barack Obama reluctantly endorsed me when I was the only man left standing. Why? He knows I'm going to lose. He knows my reputation's attached to him. The whole plan. He was hoping somebody else. He was hoping somebody else with acceptable politics for the ruling class this country would break free from the pack. He was crossing his fingers behind his back for Amy Klobuchar. Or was it Pete, uh, Pete, Pete, uh, oh boy. Ah, shit, you all know his, you know the kid. Yeah, yes, we, the kid. we, we know, the, the mayor Pete, uh, Pete Buttigieg. Yeah, the Pete, 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 Puck's Tony Phil. He was, he was crossing his fingers one of these kids would win. One of these young, young kids like uh, Mike Bloomberg or Amy Klobuchar. But Joe Biden's standing. He's standing and he's holding the centrist torch. Let me tell you, pal. Barack Obama called me up. I got a rotary phone. <laughs> called me up on the rotary phone. It went ring, 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 ring. Went through the switchboard here at the house. Got to me. I was in the middle of sleep. I was sleeping. I had a Scrooge. I had an Ebenezer Scrooge nightcap on. You were holding a candle. This sounds very much like a Goosebumps story. Yes, I'm getting inspiration. I woke up and I had like big slippers. Like, a, like sure, yeah, like a, you can imagine it like that. I think of it as one of the scary stories. I think of it more like a goofy cartoon. Phone rang. I got up in the middle of the night and I spent five minutes slipping into my slippers. Phone kept ringing, phone kept ringing, phone kept ringing. I fell down the stairs so hard that I sprung back up the stairs and fell down again. When I got on that phone call with Barack Obama, he said, Joe, I got no other plan. You're the last ditch. I said, thank you for that ringing endorsement. We're running with it. We're running with it. I'm an old football man. You get the ball, interception. You got to fumble that ball a couple times. You're going to run it down in the mud. But Mr. Biden, Fumble who- that ball, turnover to a turnover to a turnover to a turnover. It's an old-fashioned mud ball. Who would you pick as your vice president? Then? Yes, I'm sure this is a question you get all the time, but perhaps it's a no better opportunity than to share with, with a master class uh, students who are looking forward to learning from you how to lose an election. Whoa, 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 clam bank. Hold your horses there, Clydesdale. Everybody wants to know who you're going to pick, who's your pick. I'll tell you what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick whatever hell I want if it's my backside or my front side. The only vice president I've ever known that's the highest standard of a vice presidency is me, Joe Biden. Vice President Joe Biden, that was a tough bar to fill. That was a high bar. I used to cut ribbons. I met I met people like Angela Merkel. It's very exciting. I sat down. I sat down with people. I sat down with I met the Queen of England, pal. I went down to Mexico. They charged me full price. I said, hey, I'm vice president. They said, you hear I'm diplomatic business? I said, not necessarily unless you got a back deal. They cut the bill in Cancun by 20%. Well, there, yes, I imagine there are many uh, perks to the vice presidency. Um, Do you want uh, to serve as your own vice president? Is that what you were saying That's here today? That's the idea, pal. Consolidate powers. There's nothing. It doesn't strictly say you can't do it in the Constitution. So if you were to tragically die, then you yourself then I would, would replace be myself with Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden. There's no better way to fill a void of disappointment with a bigger void of more disappointment. Yes. Joe, Bi- Joe Biden. Rest, rest in peace, Joe Biden. Long live Joe Biden. Yes, I, I can imagine. Uh, and then it feels. I'll be like the Holy Roman Emperor. It, you can never get rid of it me. It feels that way that we. Uh, we are going to be plagued by ghosts in this country for forever, it seems. Uh, and not, oh. that, not that we already have not been. Yes, it's very spooky, uh, RL, but this is what I was saying before. Ectoplasm. Yes, uh, well, no, these are very real ghosts. These are oh. uh, these are ghosts uh, that haunt us in every way. I mean, this the, the markets. We have a ghost uh, that is a, a market that we believe in that will crumble and we will we will follow it down into an abyss, uh, much like uh, we said before with Wiley e. Coyote going off of a cliff. Uh, um, uh, Joe. Woohoo! Scary! Scary time! Yes, uh, uh, so, uh, Joe, but I want to talk more about the Masterclass because that is why we were here. Uh, we, this is not an official uh, campaign event uh, that we are running here. 
and and and, and though it is um, uh, because of masterclass that you are here, I want to know what is uh, why what is will you be teaching people since uh, you yourself have mentioned you will not be teaching anything. I'll tell you what I'll teach. I'll sit you down. If you're five years old, I'll teach you how to fish a nickel out of the bottom of a fishing well. If you're uh, if you're uh, if you're out of work, out of work, single mother of four, crying on the front steps of a fire station, I'll come down. I'll put my hands on your shoulders and I'll say, "Hey, sweetheart, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I've been in a bad place. There was a time when I was United States senator. I didn't know if I was going to be reelected or not." I understand exactly where you're coming from. You don't know. You don't know if the food stocks in this beautiful, bountiful country are going to reelect you back in a natural life for another year or a month or even a week. I understand the people. Yeah, I'm here to teach them. I'm here to teach these people. Hey, folks, you can teach them. Here's a saying. Here's a saying that I know. This is the saying this country is founded on. This is page two of the United States Constitution. <laughs> You open it up and it says, "Teach man, if you give if, if if you teach a man to give give himself a fish, then you've taught a man to give himself a fish. But if that man can't fish, then he's a danger to society." This is folks. what it says on page two of the Constitution. Yes, page two of the Constitution. If you can't teach a man to fish, he's not going to fish for himself. Maybe he doesn't like the taste of it. Try lobster. Give him a ham sandwich. And if he can't, if he's just, if he's stubborn and he doesn't want to fish or find himself a sandwich, he doesn't want mayonnaise, maybe the guy doesn't like condiments. Maybe he's a danger uh. to society, pal. And that's why I voted anybody who refuses to fish for himself, that's why I voted to lock him up. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of my record, which was to incarcerate people for not being able to stand up for themselves. It's a very uh, complicated um, record that you have here, but um, what you have just uh, illuminated for me is that the Constitution is far more creatively written than I had previously uh, imagined. Yeah, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. There's a back page of it. There's a, there's a back page of it that lets you do a maze while you wait for your table at Applebee's. This is a very fascinating for discovery for me. And, and RL, uh, as a creative uh, writer, you must, uh, 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 you must uh, have some opinions, perhaps, on the Constitution of the United States. Uh, well, I did not like the part about the mayonnaise. It is a viscous liquid that is goopy to me and uh, quite untasteful. But uh, I am a firm believer in the United States, and I am excited for Mr. Biden to serve as our president, and uh, I hope that in the White House you are not walking around the halls in the Lincoln bedroom and whatnot and going into the rooms, the Oval Office, and there you open a door. And what should you find behind that door? Gunk! Gunk! Everywhere! Ah! Well, that's just curious. That's the scariest thing imaginable. What I'm most afraid of. Oh boy. You're gonna whoa, I gotta back I gotta back off there, Bill. That's a tough one. I look you up and down, I look in your God's honest face, and I see, wow, this guy looks like a guy like the guy from It's a Wonderful Life who loses the check at the bank with the big eyebrows. But then I do I not own a television. These scary stories like that. This these slime doors you keep opening, that's scarier than the coronavirus. Slime that's scarier doors. than any kind of economic setback that can happen from a global pandemic. Well, um, I, I want to, maybe I have not talked much about um, my own masterclass yet. Uh, of course, I teach directing. I am a filmmaker. Um, I do documentaries as well as narrative films. And uh, one of the many benefits uh, for me uh, of, of a future in which, Joe, you are possibly president or, Joe, in which you have lost the presidency is that um, every film that it's I will make is... It's going to be the latter one, I'll tell you that for sure. Yes, uh, either way, uh, there will be no shortage of, of horrific documentaries for me to be making um, as there is only the possibility of life quality decreasing um, uh, around the country of the United States of America and most likely... Um, the rest of the world, uh, as as you can imagine. 
Well, the only way that I could possibly win this is if stock market crashes. American people, stock stock market resilient. They don't care how many how many body bags there are. Is that the only way you can win this? The only way I'm gonna win this is if the the body bags are so they start stuffing, they start get physically getting in the way of the stock market. And what about the possibility the that market, that happens, but you uh, you still are unable to win? What uh, what then? If, if the if the stock market graph wants to go up and bam bam bam, it can't because wow, there's a stack of bodies. Then there's going to be a market crash. That's Stop when Joe Biden bodies. slides in low turnout election. What we're facing is a historic low turnout election. We might not even be able to vote in person. This is I, everybody can see this coming. It's not a cancel election. They're going to get away with it. <laughs> They're going to say, "Hey, we got to take extra precautions this time." So it's going to look there's going to be some results that somebody will stamp, and it'll be low turnout. And that's where people like Donald Trump thrive, pal. He wants to get reelected with 20% of the country. That's how it's going to go. And a lot of people it, are saying that modern times are even scarier than fiction. I don't know if I agree with that. This is what I am. That's what, literally what I have just said, R.L. Stein, that um, there is. I don't know about that. I think there's nothing scarier than the books you're writing, pal. Well, I'll tell you what is very scary, and I would like to plug this here at the end of this episode. I went onto a browser on on the computer and a safari it was called and i opened up netflix and i was browsing around the different titles and i clicked a picture of gwyneth paltrow and what should i see goop goop everywhere <laughs> this uh, you know this guy's great this guy is great I think somebody ought to give you a TV show at 4 p.m. I'd watch. That's my prime time. Yeah, so maybe there is uh, some position for RL in the cabinet so long as uh, you do not open it and uh, double back <laughs> from fear. That's right. As long as we don't open up that cabinet, wow, he'll come sliming out. Let me tell you something. I've been on Nickelodeon. I know how it feels. Have you actually been on Nickelodeon? I know how, I know how it feels to get gack, get gack and slime all over your face. I've had to repurpose uh. it. I've said, hey, this will this will be good fix. This will be good um, off-brand generic fixident to keep my dentures in. Perhaps you I could can, be. We can work with the slime as a society. We can work with the slime. We can look at it face to face. We can stare down the slime and say, we know you're here to stay. How can we arrange you in 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 a physical economy? That's what we were taught by one of our great founding fathers, Ronald Reagan. I'm proud to look up to him. I would like But to throw my name in the hat as Secretary of Housing and Urban Scare Development. <laughs> he, well, uh, Whoa, pal! Whoa, pal! Yes. Heebie, heebie, jeebie! <laughs> uh, well, th uh, this, unfortunately, I think is bringing us to the end of um, this Masterclass, Masterclass, but it has been um, very thrilling, both uh, for uh, different scary reasons as well as informative hey. uh, for the... Hey, Goosebumps! Yes. I got a promise for you. I got a promise for you, Goosebumps. November 2020 of 20, November <laughs> of 2021 of the 2020s. I'm gonna open that door. I'm gonna open the front door of the White House, and I'm gonna say, "Hey, it's time for me to be the 46th president of the United States, first president, vice president." Open that door. When I open the door of that White House, tell me how it's gonna look. Trump. Trump. <laughs> Trump will be there. Well. Uh This is uh, truly the scariest of the stories you have yes. told. And Reality. I want to thank you, RL. Do you have any uh, closing words for us? Or, uh... mm, just look into the night and f it will be a fright. Thank you. That thank is you. the rhyme I always end my speeches with. Yes, thank you very much for that. And, uh, and Joe, any closing words, any message to Americans? She came from somewhere back in the long ago. I'm from the 1970s, pal. I'm from a world of shag carpets and barbiturates. Sentimental fool, what she wants to believe, but she catch to she be she sedated. <laughs> Once in her time, he had a thing for his life. He, as he rises to the vice presidency, all he wants to do is do, 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 what a fool be, who he, 
A Biden 2020. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the end of this masterclass, masterclass. Uh, for everyone who has tuned in, thank you. And I hope you have walked away from this uh, with having learned something about filmmaking or writing stories or losing the 2020 election his in a historically unprecedented way. Uh, but thank you nonetheless. And um, I hope you, uh, thank you to our panelists. Uh, I hope uh, you, you continue to do great work and prosper. Uh, and uh, we shall all continue to prosper, is what I am thinking. And so, thank you, uh, and uh, thank you. When's lunch? Who's bringing me lunch? Can one of you fellas come over here and give me some lunch? Berlin. It's the Berlin Open Stage Show. Wow. wow. What an episode. That was really so amazing. I couldn't I couldn't believe that, you know, maybe the next president of the United States was on our podcast. I mean, like we've had a lot of people on our podcast now, yeah. but to have the 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 possible the next president possible of, of next the president. States. I mean, did you did you imagine that when we were starting this show in in, in at Comedy Cafe Berlin uh, a few years ago? Ah, wow. Yeah, jeez, I don't know. I I to be honest, I didn't know who was going to sign up and I st we still don't know who's going to sign up each week. So, yeah. it's hard it's hard. Maybe we'll get the current president at some point. That would be well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I don't know how I feel about it, but uh, I'll, I will accept the offer if it comes on the table. Yeah, yeah, we we have no choice. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, the, this we have a few people. We have one yeah. person actually to thank. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what they did for this episode. But we have to thank James Adomian for. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a comedian and actor uh, in Los Angeles, I believe. I, I don't know if he helped, you know, uh, involve any of the people who were on the episode. Or yeah, I'm not like sure. That. But but if you if you like James or if you want to check James out, you can check out the Underculture, which is his podcast on the Forever Dog Podcast Network. Uh, and it's a great. A great podcast. Yeah, and yeah. He, he gets uh, he gets all kinds of crazy recordings on there too from uh, from uh, famous people. Joe Biden has appeared on that podcast too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, yeah, definitely check that out. You can also uh, go on patreon.com and, uh, you know, uh, pay some money and become a patron of it and you get bonus content and and you support the podcast. So yeah. definitely uh, something we recommend doing. Yeah, we recommend doing that uh, and maybe we should be doing that ourselves. Who knows? Uh, we, yeah, I don't yeah. think I, mean, I don't think we have enough people. Love. I don't think we have enough people who know anything <laughs> Maybe about after us. Joe Biden was on. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we get that Biden bump. The Biden bump. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, sounds like a medical condition. Uh, we should also uh, thank Comedy Cafe yeah. Berlin, where we usually record these live episodes, uh, as well as Bear Radio for hosting us online, and Bangless for our theme song. Yeah, that's it for us uh, this time around. Check back; we have uh, two episodes a week these days. Yeah, so uh, check out our other episodes and uh, all the celebrities that have come through our doors <laughs> in Thanks. the last few years. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to The Boss, the Berlin Open Stage Show. The Boss is produced by Stainer Janssen and Trevor Silverstein and is released in partnership with Bear Radio. You can find this and other shows at bearradio.org. New episodes are recorded live every Thursday at 11 p.m. at the Comedy Cafe Berlin. Entry is free, so join us for the live experience. Also, a special thanks to Banglist for our theme song and once more to Comedy Cafe Berlin. The Boss is available wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to subscribe and maybe even leave a review. Interested in sponsoring The Boss? Write to us at podcasttheboss at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening and see you next time at the Berlin Open Stage Show.